So your professor has given you a folder or a zip file full of inscrutable files and told you to use GMDE for your next exercise. How do you begin? The purpose of this screencast is to answer that question and give you a brief overview of how to do things in GMDE once you have already installed the program. On the screen, you see a typical folder of files that the professor might distribute. Locate the file with the GMDE binary suffix right here. Now, if you're using a Mac, you can just double click on that file to launch GMDE and open the file. If you're on Windows, the first time you double click, you may have to tell the system which program to use to open the file. After that first launch, Windows should automatically launch the program when you double click on the binary. So let's do that now. Now, GMDE automatically expands to fill the whole screen. And I'm not actually recording the whole screen. Uh, so you can certainly resize the window by grabbing the lower left or lower right corner and resizing the screen. So it just fits the area that you have available. You can navigate around the map by dragging the scroll bars or using the scroll wheel on the mouse, but you can also navigate by going to the Windows menu and choosing Overview. This gives you a little picture of the entire map and the red box shows you the uh, area currently covered. And you can drag that red box around the screen until uh, it shows you the area that you want. But we can also change the scale of the map by using this combo box down here in the lower right corner. Because this file is an MB tiles file, the scale is defined as zoom levels, where level one would show the entire Earth and level 18 has a resolution of less than one pixel uh, per meter, excuse me, less than one meter per pixel. In this case, uh, we'll uh, just leave it here at 15. But you can set that either with the combo box or by right clicking in the map, choosing zoom level and then setting the zoom level here. For this exercise, you can see there are some points of interest, these gray triangles. You can select one by just simply clicking on it. It gets a yellow halo around it. And uh, because these are points of interest, the points of interest tab in the data section of the screen has automatically been selected and you can see the details of that point uh, of interest. The person who made this file did not choose a particularly useful color uh, to make these uh, points of interest stand out. So let's change that now. Go to the Windows menu and select Inspector. It opens to the POI tab. You can see that all of these points of interest are of type general and general is selected here. So we can just change the color by clicking this color rectangle and choose a color which is look much look more likely to show up well, like bright yellow. There we go. Now yeah, that's better. All right, now let's set a new POI and add a photo to it. Our new POI is going to go right in here. And so I'm going to zoom to level 16 or maybe 17. So I can zoom right to this point. The photo I'm going to add was taken right at this point here. Now, um, make sure, first of all, that no POIs are already selected. And then we're going to click this button here and then click on the map where we want the new POI to be, right there. Automatically fills in the latitude and longitude and elevation and uh, the date and time. This is going to be a picture of a beautiful path in woods and it's going to be type photograph. And now we want to add the photo. We do that by clicking the add photo button and this window appears. 
We're going to use drag and drop, and I've stored the photo I want to add in the project folder. So I'm going to go back to the desktop, find the photo, which is this image, uh, JPEG, and start dragging it. Now let's go back to GMDE and drop the image right here, and there it is. I can close that window and be sure to remember to record the POI. And you can see that a little camera icon has shown up here on the map. If I want to uh, see that again, I can click on that image. And now it says show photo rather than add photo. And I click that and there's the photo that I just added. Finally, two other quick things to try. Let's make a simple contact. We do that by going to the Operations menu, Contacts, and Draw New. I click to set the first point, and then I can click and where I want additional points in the polygon that defines the contact to be. And I give it a name, maybe Delta Surface. And let's make it a closed or a filled polygon and click OK. And there is our polygon. Now, the last thing I want to do very quickly to show you is to um, draw a quick topo cross section across this contact that I've just drawn. So we go to Operations, Define Topo Profile, and we're going to start here. My topo profile can have as many points as I want. I'm going to make it relatively straight, and you'll see why in a minute. Double-click to finish drawing the topo profile. Let's give it some uh, creative name like AA Prime, and click OK, and there it is, and it's been resampled. Now. I want to show that topo profile. I could choose topo cross section and show it, but I'm going to plot this profile right on the map. Uh, and for that, I go to the plot menu and choose topo section on map. I have to tell whether to uh, what to include, and I'm going to include the checked contacts on the profile. I click OK, and there it is. But it's upside down. The reason why it's upside down is because I started in the east and drew it to the west. To change that, I can go to uh, Reverse Profile under the Operations menu, and now it's as I uh, have drawn it, and it's located these uh, two points where it crosses the uh, cross section uh, on the uh, profile. If I show the profile in a separate window, I can do some more creative things, like change the vertical exaggeration, like that. Finally, if I select in the window, I select a point on the window, uh, vertex on the profile on the window, the same vertex on the profile on the ground is also selected. That's it for this video, and I hope you found this useful.